All right. In this video, I wanted to discuss the structure of the bacterial cell envelope. Uh, understanding the structures in the bacterial cell envelope and the differences in the bacterial cell envelopes of different kinds of bacteria is critically important to understanding why we can treat certain bacteria with certain drugs uh, and things like that. So let's begin by looking at the um, structures that make up the bacterial cell envelope. All right, so every bacterial cell envelope has up to three structures. We'll start with the cell membrane. So no matter the bacterial cell envelope, 100% of bacterial cells have a cell membrane. In fact, we know from our previous learning that every cell that exists has a cell membrane. Uh, the cell membrane is critically important for controlling what enters and exits the cell. So all cells have to have this structure. So that's one part of the bacterial cell envelope. The next structure that can be part or that is part of the bacterial cell envelope is the peptidoglycan cell wall. So peptidoglycan is a chemical that uh, bacteria tend to make their cell walls out of. We'll learn a lot more about peptidoglycan in another, in another video. So all bacterial cell envelopes have the cell membrane, and then all bacterial cell envelopes have the peptidoglycan cell wall. The last structure that can exist in some bacterial cell envelopes is the outer membrane. So this structure is only in some bacteria, and we'll talk about which bacteria those are shortly. So the cell envelope is a pretty simple structure. It contains these three elements, the cell membrane, the peptidoglycan cell wall, and the outer membrane. So let's think about the orientation in which these structures are put together. So we're going to start with the cell membrane. Again, we've said that every cell that exists requires a cell membrane because it controls what gets into and out of the cell. This is the innermost structure of the cell envelope. So I've got a red cell membrane here. Um, and it's surrounding what would be the cytoplasm inside this cell. So again, every single bacterial cell has that cell membrane. The next structure is if we move outwards is the cell wall. So we put the cell wall in here as blue. Here's the peptidoglycan cell wall. Um, it lies outside of the cell membrane. They're always in that order that never changes. So we go cell, uh, cytoplasm in the middle, then the cell membrane as we move outwards, and then after that, the peptidoglycan cell wall. Again, every bacterial cell envelope has both the membrane and the cell wall. And then some have this last layer that I'll show in yellow, which is the outer membrane. And again, the only bacteria, or for the first time, the only bacteria that have the outer membrane are gram-negative bacteria. So we're going to think about the differences between gram negatives and gram positives. And it's important to recognize that only gram negatives have the outer membrane. And that's the structure. Again, it's always in this orientation. This orientation, which layer is where, never deviates. The cell membrane is always the innermost layer. The peptidoglycan cell wall is just outside the cell membrane. And if it exists, the outer membrane is outside of all of those layers. So <clears throat> there's one last layer or um, space more like it that we should name. So when we talk about these cell envelopes, we will also talk about the periplasm or you might hear it called the periplasmic space. The periplasm is the space in between these layers. So in a gram negative that has all three, the periplasm is all the space between the outer membrane and the cell membrane. In gram uh, positives that lack the outer membrane, the periplasm is the space between the cell membrane and the cell wall. So gram negatives have a larger periplasm, gram positives have a smally, smaller periplasm, but both kinds of bacteria do have a periplasm. And it serves important functions for the bacteria that we'll learn about later in the semester.
All right, so let's think more about the types of bacterial cell envelopes. There's the gram negatives and the gram positives. So on the left here, I'm showing you the exact same diagram I had on the last slide. This was the gram negative cell envelope. On the inside, we had the red cell membrane. In the middle, there's the blue peptidoglycan cell wall. And then on the outside is the yellow outer membrane. And again, the space between the outer membrane and the cell membrane is the periplasm. All right, so that's gram negatives. How are gram positives different? Well, gram positives, again, they don't have the outer membrane. So we're only showing the inner red cell membrane. Then just outside of that, the blue cell wall. Again, the space in between the two is the periplasm. So this is the first and most obvious difference between a gram negative cell and a gram positive cell. It's the presence or absence of the outer membrane. But let's think a little bit more. So there are more differences we can highlight here in a diagram. So next, Let's add this detail, that in gram negatives, this peptidoglycan cell wall is relatively thin. Whereas in gram positives, that peptidoglycan cell wall is relatively thick. So I'm gonna adapt my uh, diagram to try to represent that difference. And I'm making that peptidoglycan layer much thicker. For specificity, let's add some actual um, quantification to that difference. So if we were to describe just how much thicker the gram-positive cell wall is, it's somewhere between 10 and 30 times thicker. So if you measure the thickness of the peptidoglycan in gram-positive cells, it measures somewhere between 30 and 100 nanometers thick. Whereas in gram-negatives, that cell wall is just a few like three or so nanometers thick. So again, 10 to 30 times thicker, a much thicker peptidoglycan cell wall. So again, when we're thinking about the bacterial cell envelope, it's critically important we understand what layers exist. It's really important that we know what order the layers are in. And then we should be able to describe the differences between a gram negative and a gram positive. Again, gram negatives have the outer membrane, but they have a thinner cell wall. Gram positives lack the outer membrane, but they have a thicker cell wall. So let's summarize that here in a table. Again, we know that gram negatives have a thin cell wall, whereas gram positives have a thick cell wall. We know that gram negatives have a, an outer membrane, whereas gram positives have no outer membrane. Let's add a couple more details. Um, as we learn more about the peptidoglycan structure, we're going to see that in gram positives, that peptidoglycan is rich with a chemical called tychoic acid. Whereas in gram negatives, their cell walls contain little to no tychoic acid. So there's a chemical distinction between these two cell walls as well, not just the thickness difference. And then the last detail we should add right now is the difference in how these cells appear if you do the gram staining procedure on them. So gram negative cells, they will stain pink during gram staining, whereas gram positive cells will stain purple during gram staining. So if we can draw diagrams that appropriately demonstrate the location and orientation of these structures, and we understand these differences, in the bacterial cell envelopes, we should be all set to proceed forward and use that knowledge to describe why different kinds of bacteria, gram positives or gram negatives, behave differently in different conditions. So we'll stop there. Um, as always, if you have any questions, I hope you'll ask on the discussion board or in class, and I'll talk to you more later.